Welcome to the AS Code podcast. So I'm sharing here valuable scientific information, but also my own experiences to increase your quality of life with ankylosing spondylitis. So my name is Kevin Rubens, and I've been living with AS for the past 12 years. I'm a rehabilitation scientist and physiotherapist, and I started this podcast because I felt like, how can I put out information that I researched to people that have the similar problems that I have, okay? So I'm, my goal here is to just share whatever I found with you to make sure that you can also find ways to increase your quality of life. So uh, today's subject is probably one of the most important uh, I can cover. Um, it will not only decrease your fatigue, it will probably decrease inflammation, but it will also increase your just overall well-being and energy levels throughout the day. So of course you might be thinking what it is, very simple, it's our sleep, okay? Sleep is important, why? Because sleep is where we can make the most gains towards the day. Okay. If we sleep well, we will feel well throughout the day. So of course, I cannot cover everything like sleep hacks, supplements. This will be for another um, episode. Today, I'm going to focus on one of the most important parts of sleep. Um, and I would say, let's start right with this. So first thing or last thing I want to say is make sure this is not, this is only educational purpose only. Okay. Don't use this as medical advice. If you want to change something, uh, always visit your doctor, rheumatologist, or any other professional if you want to start something new, okay? So the first time I came in contact with sleep was, of course, very early on because everybody sleeps, but um, that I really started being more aware of it was when I started reading uh, Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. This is a book, and I re uh, recommend this to everybody, where it goes in depth on the signs of sleep and how important this is. So this is also when I purchased a Garmin um, watch to see and, and understand what are my sleep cycles, how is my sleep structured throughout the night. And very fast, I saw that I had some issues with sleep disturbances. That means I was awake throughout the night a lot. And I started reading more in the science and, and trying out new stuff uh, to make sure that this would drop down. So right now I'm in a very good place. So I also purchased another tracker. This is a Whoop. I talked to it already a couple of times. This is more accurate. And I this also has questionnaires every morning. And this is where I can see, okay, what did I do or didn't do in the evening before that affected my sleep? So I'm starting to be way more aware of everything. Uh, and I can say that my sleep disturbances have decreased significantly. Um, over the past two years. So for me, it's important that we discuss this a little bit because there are some studies that suggest we should. Um, sleep quality, for example, is a major factor in general well-being and our quality of life. So a study has shown that people with AS, has, they have more troubles with the sleep quality. People with AS will experience sleep-related symptoms. Up to 90% of the people with AS, they report poor sleep and sleep disturbances, just like me, okay? 90%. 90% is almost every one of us with ankylosing spondylitis. That means that this topic is super, super, super important. That's why I also took this topic and make sure we have a discussion about this today. So a recent meta-analysis, which is a very big study, found that there is a relationship between the sleep disturbances and the CRP. The CRP is our C-reactive protein. You probably heard of, about this one. It's a blood marker and this is actually your systemic inflammation in, in the body, you could say. And then we also have interleukin-6, which was also associated with this. This is also, again, a marker when you have higher inflammation in the body, this will also increase. So more sleep disturbances, higher CRP, higher interleukin-6. Especially when we know, okay, sleep disturbances are 90%, we should already start to think, okay, is it actually the sleep? So if my poor sleep quality making my body more inflamed, or is it because I'm in a flare, for example, and I can sleep, yeah, I will not sleep as good. So this is, of course, a vicious circle. What is first, we don't know. We don't know what went first but it's the goal of us to get out of the circle and start a new one and a more healthier one. So 
it doesn't really matter where we start, but if we can increase our sleep quality, as the study suggests, we can maybe decrease our inflammation levels and also decrease our disease activity, making our chances for a flare go down. Less flares to throughout the year, better feeling, more energy, also better sleep. And this, of course, can only go up. And hopefully, when we get this all under control, we can even get out of any medication and start living a normal life again. Um, there was another study. This was very, very cool, actually. Um, they found that people with AS, when they had less physical or when they were less physical active throughout the day, they had higher chances of developing more sleep disturbances or a lower quality of life. So you could also turn this around and say, okay, people who were more active or active throughout the day slept better. Okay. I think this is something very important um, just to make sure that we can sleep better. So if you're not really active throughout the day, maybe you can discuss this with your rheumatologist and start incorporating some movement. Okay. Last one, uh, before we go in depth a little bit about the sleep, in addition to that, previous studies have explored that poor or insufficient sleep can worsen disease activity, increase fatigue, increase your chance for depression, and impair just your overall health-related quality of life, making sleep one of the top priorities, especially in our, in, in our situation. This is what I wrote down. Sleep is literally medicine, if you do it correctly, of course. How much is too much and how much is not enough? So, of course, if we sleep not enough or we sleep too much, we can increase our inflammation in the body. Therefore, it's important that we don't stay too long in bed, but also, of course, don't wake up or don't get out of bed too early. So, they always say between seven and nine hours. And we need to make sure that not everybody is the same. So male and female have also differences. So if you have a partner, it could be that there's a big difference between both. And sometimes, of course, this can happen. My wife sleeps less than me. I like to sleep a little bit longer. This is fine. Communicate this very efficiently and effectively, and you will find a very good way. For us, it's on this moment always a very sensitive topic, but we can manage. Um, what I also wrote down is, uh, super super important that even after one night of poor sleep one night poor sleep can be too much the services can be too or too less or too much or too too much sleep um, there is a possibility that you can increase your inflammatory markers one night so this makes sleep again very very important and it should be maybe even number one um, as discussed before, very shortly, the structure of the sleep, because I think this is also important that you understand which stages are maybe more important for us uh, when we have this, this problem or this disease. So all stages combined, they are normally 90 to 120 minutes. So that's one cycle. You will always start off with a very light sleep. So the brain waves are going down and you will start sleeping, let's say. You will quickly, especially in the first night of the, uh, the first part of the night, you will quickly drop into a stage three or even a stage four. And this is your deep sleep. Okay. Deep sleep is needed. Why? Because here is where we release a growth hormone. And this growth hormone is important. Why? Because this hormone helps us to rebuild tissue. We know we have this disease, which actually breaks down tissue. So if we have enough stage three or deep sleep, this can actually help us to <clears throat> maybe rebuild some tissues. It also helps us to eliminate waste products, which is also important, of course, if we have this chronic inflammatory disease, that all this stuff gets flushed away quickly, and then we can start to rebuild the tissue again. The other phase that I'm talking about is your dreaming phase. Also important, why? Just for overall brain health, for learning, and then something important is also to process our emotions that happen throughout the day. We know that we have a higher chance of developing depression. And if you, as, as, um, have you learned today that you see that even with low sleep, you can increase your depression. So REM sleep or dreaming phase, if we have this sufficient, this can also make us process these emotions also better. 
which can, of course, increase a little bit of our feeling throughout the day. Um, and then you're like, okay, how much should I deep sleep? How much should I dream? Now, this is hard if you don't have a tracker. And of course, there's always an error on those trackers. So for me, the easiest way to see if, if I had enough deep sleep or REM sleep is when I wake up like a champion. Um, then you probably had enough sleep. You had all the stages in a perfect um, level or in a perfect uh, amount. And then, boom, your day is going to be very nice. But what they say is deep sleep should be around 20% of your night. REM sleep should be around 20 to 25%. And the remaining time, of course, we're in this more lighter stages. But also we are awake. Between 30 and 60 minutes we are awake each night. Um, so now that you know those numbers a little bit, um, let's, let's find a way to make sure that you can wake up also refreshed. Okay? And then we can hopefully decrease our sleep disturbances and then in the future decrease our inflammation and feel better. Now this is probably the most important part of our um, discussion today and that is called our circadian rhythm. Okay? Um, this is your light-dark cycle. When it's light outside, we are, let's say, alive. When it's dark, we're sleeping. Okay? So you could say that the sleep-wake cycle is also part of it. We also have hormones, temperature, and food and stuff, but I don't want to go too much in detail there. The most important is that we have the circadian rhythm under control. They even figured out that the circadian rhythm is so, so important that there is a new medicine called circadian medicine, okay? So you need to make sure if you can optimize this rhythm, you will optimize your sleep, you will optimize your life, okay? That's why this is a big red dot circadian rhythm important. Now, how can you set the circadian rhythm to make sure that it is optimized and good for your sleep inflammation? The first thing is you need to wake up and go to bed at the same time each day. I know this is hard, I also experience this in the weekends. Eh, it's more, you're more relaxed, you stay up late, you wake up later, but this is actually detrimental. Why? Because you're, the Monday to Friday, you're doing this very perfectly. Boom, go to bed, let's say at 10, wake up at six. Perfect. And then in the weekend, it goes up, it goes down, and the body is like, what's happening here? I'm, I'm trying to get this rhythm, but this rhythm is like completely... Uh, fucked up and then Monday comes and everybody's like oh Monday is the worst day of the week this and that but that's just because you messed up the rhythm on the weekend if you would keep the same rhythm Monday would be like a Saturday or like a Sunday you would just feel normal right I know there are some issues when there are children when there are newborns when you have even a shift job but this is what the science is saying that if you can wake up and go to bed at the same time each day, you will feel better. This is how it is. Now, important. From the moment you wake up, you need to go outside as quickly as possible. You have, let's say, 30, to one, 30 minutes to one hour to get at least some sunlight on your eyes. Okay? For example, in summer, it's super easy. For me, I open up the window, light comes in straight to my eyes on my skin because the skin also has photoreceptors. So if you have less clothes on, your body will also activate faster. This will activate this master clock in my body. And this will say to all those other clocks, my organs, just my body in general, my hormones, hey guys, it's time to shine, time to wake up, okay? This morning light is important. Sometimes when it's blue sky, you only need two to five minutes. If it's cloudy and it's snowing, or raining, then you probably need a little bit longer. And this is where the challenge, of course, lies. Summer, it's way easier because it's warm, it's nice. Winter is colder. And of course, um, the sun will not be out there at 8.30 or 9. It could even be later. So then it's, of course, time to use some hacks, which I will, which I will go into discuss in, the, in one of the next episodes. But the most important is to view morning light, not behind the window, not inside, outside, or at least with the windows open. And just let it, let it come to you and you will feel better right away. I add a movement practice in there just to get some more blood flow. Um, but this is very personally. Next thing, so that was in the morning, as much morning light as you can. Second thing, be outside as much as possible throughout the day. This will keep the body 
knowing, hey, it's light, I need to stay awake. We are unfortunately inside almost the whole day, which is, I guess, pretty detrimental for our health if we see what's happening outside on the world right now, how many people are actually getting sick. Of course, this is not a, a correct relationship, but there's many more factors um, playing in there. But anyway, this is still an important part because we're not doing this enough. Two to three hours, maybe one or two hours, two to three hours, yeah, more better, more is better, okay? Outside, get your feet on the ground, earth or grounding a little bit, do some uh, midday sports outside, whatever you need to do, get, go outside so your body knows it's still time to shine. Then we go to the evening. In the evening, it's very important that we stay away from any bright lights. The bright lights will keep you awake. It will be like artificially the sun, let's say. Um, dim your lights uh, is something you can do. I have this glasses that is also making sure that these lights get blocked a little bit. All tricks and, and, and stuff you can use, but the, the easiest way is actually to follow the rules of the sunset. So when the sun goes down, you go down and then try to limit any crazy lights um, as much as possible to make sure that this hormone called melatonin can go up, you can fall asleep faster. A good tip is you can also go outside when there is a sunset, okay? The body will view this, this light going down and then it will also increase the melatonin production and maybe make you fall asleep a little bit faster, okay? The last tip is then the one throughout the night and there is a little bit um, or it's, a, it's actually a big part between 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. there should be zero light or at least close to none. Why? Because there was a study and this is important they found out that even a little bit of light can actually mess up your sleep. We know that there are photoreceptors on the skin so they can actually also um, feel light you could say when you are sleeping and there is still light outside so you don't have these big curtains or those roll things or those electrical things um, to to like have no light from the outside you can actually in decrease your sleep quality because even if a foot or a hand or your face is out there <laughs> out of your bed this is this can actually like really decrease uh, your sleep quality and this is proven so my suggestion here is so i wear a sleep mask to make sure that my eyes are at least covered and then try to keep the room as dark as you possibly can um, so those are my tips but most important is be outside as much as possible especially in the early morning and then your body will sense this okay good it's time to shine and then from the moment the sun goes down, it's time to wind down and get ready for a very good night's sleep. And then you will also feel like me in the morning. You don't need an alarm anymore but because you just wake up um, automatically. Okay, so get this rhythm right and I'm pretty sure you will feel much better throughout the day. So that's it for this uh, episode. Next episode is going to be movement again. I'm going to explain with you three movements you can do to increase your mobility. And then in a future episode, I'm, I'm going to go a little bit deeper in sleep hacks. So really hacking your sleep to make sure that you can also outside of our rhythm and viewing light that you can have maybe these little percentages increase in sleep quality to maybe reduce your inflammation and just feel better throughout the day. Okay, thank you. And then I'll see you later. Ciao. Thank you.